and get new copies. Sweetheart, come on, let's I'm go. I'm not your sweetheart. We got a full staff meeting. Let's move it. Come on. Okay, everybody in? As you know, people, we've been fighting the good fight. God knows we've done everything we possibly can to attract new advertisers and new readers. Are we folding? Not this week. But maybe next. Meanwhile, we've got to cut costs, and that means heads are going to roll. I'm sorry about that. I think the only fair way to do this is in order of tenure, last in, first out. So, here it is. In the art department, it's Paul and Carol. In research, Joel and David. In the editorial, it's Andy and Carly. People, I'm really sorry about this. I think this is the only fair way we can do this. Just cleaning out my desk, crying in the ladies' room, packing up my portfolio and crying in the ladies' room. <laughs> I've never been fired before. Hey, you know, Tom said he really liked your piece. Hey, there you hey. go. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think he's going to have the space to print it. Oh, oh. oh you're good, Carly. You'll get another job. Yeah. Yeah. Besides, you may have all of us keeping you company in the unemployment line. That's right. <laughs> That's the brother. And white wine spritzer? Hey. 
Oh. And a double order of guacamole. Okay. On the house. Oh, Sorry. Thanks, Carol. Thanks. Mm. Hey, come on. What's wrong with you women? This is possibly the best thing that's happened all day. Oh, sure. 100 calories a chip, 200 calories in the yogurt I had for lunch, French food tonight, unemployed and overweight. You're breaking my heart. You going out tonight? Yeah. Mark is entertaining an important client. Bad timing. Yeah, but Mark's worth it. He's one of the good ones. There aren't many left. Hey, what am I? Guacamole? <laughs> Ted, we like to think of you as one of us. No, 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 no. That doesn't cut it, Sheila. You are now forced to have gratuitous sex with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, if I were engaged to a guy like Mark, I would gladly trade in my Lois Lane costume for motherhood and the house with a little white picket fence. Oh, listen to this. I'm fed it and I'm proud. <laughs> Elaine, you hand in your Ms. Magazine subscription right now. Slaving away at a struggling newspaper for no money. Hardly the American woman's dream, let's face it. I can hear it. Another feminist diatribe. Wait, don't say anything. Let, let, let me do it. Um, men are pigs. Right. Women are victims. Here, here. Right. Let's kill the men. Power to the women. How's that? Mm-hmm. Hi. Thank you, Ted. No problem. Hey, uh, Carly, have some guacamole. No, thanks, Ted. I'm not hungry. why you didn't tell me, Carly. I'm your guy, right? We share the good news and the bad news. No use in spoiling your evening. Oh, oh yeah, Carly. You got a letter from the Village Voice today. Hmm? Probably a rejection letter. How are you going to know if you don't open it? Because when they publish you, they call. When they reject you, they write. Just what I thought. Dear Miss Perkins, thank you for submitting your article. Blah, blah, blah. We find that it doesn't suit our editorial needs at the present. A perfect end to a perfect day. No job. No article in The Voice struck out on all fronts. I'm sorry you got laid off, Carly. It could happen to anybody. Ever happened to you? Well, no. But maybe it will tomorrow. Feel better? I know you feel awful, Carly. But it's not the end of the world. You'll find another job, a better one. Oh, sure. Do you know how hard it is to try and get any kind of a writing job? Well, a lot of things are hard. Does that mean you shouldn't try? I didn't say I wouldn't try. Just being cranky and self-indulgent. I'm allowed. You give up too easily, Carly. You give up too easily on yourself. You know what I need right now from you, Mark Rogers? A hug. No lectures. Just a hug. Oh, better. Much better. I'm just trying to toughen you up. I know. Don't you worry about anything. Stay home for a while, think things out. I'll take care of this. Hi, oh, uh, I'm Carly Perkins. I'm a little early. Uh-huh. Just a moment. We're running behind. Take a seat. job 
anything? Certainly. Just fill out an application and leave it with your resume. Thank you. Have a seat. I'll let him know you're here. Thank you. Carly Perkins for Mr. Fleming. Hi. Please, come in, sit down, don't be dismayed. I really am better at this than it appears at the moment. <laughs> uh, excuse me, I've forgotten where you said you worked before. I was the uh, staff writer for the Southland Weekly. Uh-huh. Yeah, I heard that they had had some uh, problems with circulation. So, uh, what uh, kind of things did you write for them when you were there? Well, I covered uh, various local events, conducted in-depth interviews. Uh, my last piece was an investigative report on school systems in the Valley. Uh-huh. What brings you to Sports Life? Well, I'm a big fan of your magazine. You read Sports Life? <laughs> See, I'm sort of a sports nut. I um, rank third in racquetball and state competition. I play uh, outfield on a softball team. Uh, gymnastics is a very special interest uh -huh. of mine. Well, uh, look, I don't want you to think that I'm just uh, cutting this off short or anything, but I don't want to waste your time either. Um, Obviously, you are qualified, or you wouldn't be here, but you see, the trouble is I've already got a woman writer on staff. Yeah. We do have a small uh, feminine readership, uh, not very much, but I guess it's enough to, to justify a woman a writer on staff to cover, uh, well, ladies' tennis, uh, players' wives, that kind of thing, but that's it. I see. I'm terribly sorry that this isn't going to work out for you. Uh, it's been very nice to meet you. I certainly wish you all the luck in the world on your job hunt. I um, did bring some articles that I wrote and my resume. Uh, well, I do wish you luck. I mean that. But I'm not going to fire the girl that I've got. Now, why would I do that? No, you wouldn't want to do that. Thank you for your time. Surely. Have a nice day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. right. I am such a jerk. You should have heard me. Oh, I just love sports. I play outfield on a softball team. Oh, Mark, I wanted that job so badly. I must have called at least 50 places, no jobs. And that was a national magazine. Okay, so the guy didn't take you seriously. You learned a lesson the hard way. Yeah. I learned that if I were a man, he would have hired me. Oh, wrong lesson. He took one look at the way you were dressed and wrote you off. What's wrong with the way I'm dressed? You love this suit. Oh, sure, I love it because I can sit across from you at dinner and think about how I'm going to remove it. You should have dressed more for the part. Well, a person shouldn't be hired on the basis of sex or gender. Granted, but this is the real world. Mark, the man did not want another woman on his staff, period. There are no women writers, only good writers and bad writers. I could have done a piece on the Lakers as well as any man could. Did you tell him that? No. Too bad you don't do interviews the way you play racquetball or the way you handle my client's wife. That's different. That is for you. Anyway, I still think things would have been different if I were a man. I think you're wrong, but there's no use arguing about it. Carly, the chicken's already dead.
business sorry is this for a film uh no costume party actually i'm playing a practical joke on my fiance i want to look like a man so you want to look like a man how real do you want to get oh it doesn't matter it's just a joke come here come here You know, you got the right bone structure. The right features. You know, you'd make a pretty good-looking man. I would? In fact, with a little work, you could make yourself look so good that you wouldn't believe it yourself. I could. So what do you say? You want to go for it? Oh, hi, Steve. I'm meeting Carly for lunch. Is she here yet? I haven't seen her yet, Sheila. Hey, you want something from the bar? No, I'll just take a table. See you later, Steve. Hey, Tom. Sir, would you like another white wine spritzer? Uh, <clears throat> no thanks. Uh, could you put it on my lunch bill? If I sit down, I'm meeting somebody for lunch. You don't recognize me, do you? We used to work together. Uh, I've heard more original lines. I borrowed your favorite lipstick. Want it back? That's it. Manager. She likes me, Carly. cost me a fortune, so I figured I'd get my money's worth. Honey, you have got too much time on your hands. You better find a job fast. Come on, you recognize me? I did I swear I thought you were trying to pick me up. Well, you were making it too easy. Try being friendlier. You never know when Mr. Wright's gonna come along. Let me get a look at you. It took me two hours to do the wig and the beard. <laughs> the jacket, this is Mark's old jacket, and I stuffed it up inside, see? And, oh, the pants are mine and the boots are mine. Where are your breasts? Carly, what happened to your breasts? I wrapped them. I can hardly breathe. You are a very weird person. <laughs> Listen, I lost out on a great job the other day. Mark says it's because I'm not aggressive enough. I think it's because I don't have the right equipment, if you know what I mean. <laughs> you folks ready to order? Um, wow. yes, I, uh, I'll have a mushroom omelet and a nice tea. We'll have, uh... uh... Bring me fruit salad and put the dressing on the side. Fruit salad and the dressing on the side. I think you blew your cover. See, a man would see through me right away. It has something to do with behavior. It'll take Mark about two seconds to figure it out. But boy, I'd love to see the look on his face when he does. Well, I'll say one thing for you. You're one of the best-looking guys in here. Boy, is that depressing. Looking for a job. Oh, uh, well, the uh, personnel office is uh, just down that hall and to the left. Richard needs a spark test. Where exactly? Uh, I'll be happy to show you. Oh, did you take the coach on? Now, you see that desk where the lady with the red dress is? You make a left, and it's your first door on the right. Thanks. Any 
anybody ever tell you you got great eyes? Now oh, listen. Hello. Uh, excuse me. No, not you. Could you wait for a second? Is this your girlfriend? Yeah. She's not so hot. I can't talk to you right now, Frank. No. Yes. You didn't do this with hormones, did you? I pulled it off. You didn't even know, did you? Oh, of course I knew. You did not? Oh. Admit it. You had no idea. Well, all right, maybe for a minute or two, but I mean, I would have known. How? Well, I don't know. You would have done something or said something, and let's face it, you got a pretty nice behind for a guy. Oh, right, I got to work on that. Well, it started out as a practical joke this morning, and I saw Sheila at lunch today, and she uh, said... You saw Sheila like that at a public place? Yeah, <laughs> she thought I was trying to pick her up. You got a spot on my tie. Oh. Well, Sheila asked me if I was going back to sports life as a man. Ha! Huh. Then I started to think about it. Uh, now, wait a minute. It's okay to have a little fun here. That's going too far. Why? Well, put yourself in the other guy's shoes. Exactly what I want to do. You can't. We don't know anything about men. We have certain ways of thinking. We have certain ways of talking, of standing. We don't stand like that. Well, you'll show me. You'll teach me. You think you can learn to become a man in a few days? It's taken me years. Oh, Mark. Haven't you ever done something in your life you were sorry for? And you think how things could be different if you just changed one piece in the puzzle. Well, maybe I can change that piece. I could find out at least. Your journalism degree is showing. Mark, I want that job. If I go back as a man, Dave Fleming will at least read my work. Once he does that, I have as good a shot as anybody. Be serious. He'll drop kick you where it hurts. Not if you're a good teacher. And? What's in it for me? A night of unbridled revelry in the bedroom of your choice. With or without the beard.
to do is check out the room. Don't be too anxious. Take your time. It's a public space. It's yours for the taking. No matter what happens, be cool. I'll get us some peanuts. genius. You know Fleming, he's a fanatic. Yeah. Bye. Hi. Would you please tell Mr. Uh, Fleming that Carl Parsons is here. Sure. I can fare William for a day. Great. Mr. Fleming, Mr. Parsons is here for three o'clock. Also, Jensen needs you to approve it. Great. He'll be with you in a moment. Have a seat. Thanks. Okay, for edit. What do we got? Uh, okay. Mr. Parsons? Hey, boy, oh boy, look at the time. Well, we'll squeeze this in. Rosalie, uh, car and driver in 15 minutes and no more calls. Coffee? Yeah, in the car. Hey, Jeff, did you catch that Lakers game last night? Could you believe old Kareem slam dunk in the last 10 seconds? You a Lakers fan? Oh, I'm not a fan. I'm a fanatic. Two points. Have a good game? I have very good games. Good. Hello, darling. Oh, hi, dear. Son, I just came from an interesting conversation with Hoyt Wilder, a very influential man. Now, when he comes off the court, let me introduce you. Great, thanks, Dad. Yes, he's a lovely man, and his wife is chairing the auxiliary ball this year. Hey, he could use a good broker. Might as well be you. <laughs> of course. <laughs> what do you think has happened to Carly? I don't know. I just hope I don't see it tonight on the 11 o'clock news. Oh, I think she probably has just been detained by her interview. Dear, does Carly plan to hold a job after your marriage? It's not a job, Mother. It's a career. And yes, she plans to have one. Well, I, I was only asking. Times have changed, Mother. So have women. Oh, no. Hi, Gloria. How you doing, Nate? <laughs> Oh, Mark, I got the job. I did it. Hey, Carly, your future daughter-in-law. I got the job. Isn't it great? Uh, uh, just what sort of a job, dear? Oh, Mark, you didn't, uh, you didn't tell him about all this? No. <laughs> oh, boy. Something from the bar, sir. Um, uh, uh, yes. Champagne for everyone. Certainly. 
Oh, I start to move. Oh. Call me Carl. <laughs> that had to be one of life's most embarrassing moments. If you were a guy, I'd... I'd paste you one. All right. All right. So paste me one. Come on. I'm here in the whiskers. I can't. You look like an apostle. <laughs> Listen. You're through with this today, right? I promise. I got what I wanted. I'll reveal myself. Then what do you say later tonight? You hang up your jockey shorts and meet me in the bedroom. Steve. <sighs> Jimmy Connors. I, uh, maybe even a cover. What do you think, Ron? I like it. Connors is still a finalist in almost every tournament after 10 years on the circuit. That's right. That's right. That well, then we hit it from that angle. Okay. Uh, I, I was thinking about doing a piece on Cal Ripken Jr. of the Orioles. He's the most recent guy to win player of the year, the, the season after winning rookie of the year. Well, it's not bad, but I wanted you to write the thing on the young gymnasts. Oh. Uh. Could you give it to someone else? I I'd really like to do this. Well, but... Uh, uh, <clears throat> honey, it's going to be a nice piece. It's uh, right up your alley. It's soft. It's, uh, it's gentle. It has a lot of heart. It's going to be terrific. You take that one, okay? And, uh, Hal, you take the Ripken piece. All right, then. Carl, <clears throat> you're the new kid on the block. Everybody's looking down your throat. Go ahead. What do you want to do? I'd like to try something on Portland's football team and Pam Dugan, their new owner. What's the story? For starters, their draft choices this year were brilliant. They filled all the holes in their offensive line, which was their major weakness last year. And the hook is that Pam Dugan worked the draft and did all the trading herself. Okay, Rosalie, get us two tickets to Portland Sunday morning. Early. <clears throat> one for Carl and one for myself. You take care of the story and I'll sit with the ad reps if we can pull them all together by that time. Okay, boys and girls. Thank you. Sports fans, thank you very much. Let's go to work. So, Carl, I think this is going to work. I like it. I like your style. And I pride myself on a certain, I don't know what, six cents maybe about the people who work for me. Thanks, Dave. What was it you wanted to say to me? What? Well, you said this morning that there was something important that you wanted to tell me. Uh... It was nothing, Dave. Forget about it. come back later. Oh, no. You can see I'm not doing anything important. A lot of trees died in vain for my bad days at the typewriter. That was a pretty good idea you pitched this afternoon. Thanks. Yep. It was even a good idea when I pitched it a month ago. You're kidding. Oh, don't look so shocked, Carl. I just thought you might want to know the hard facts about what goes on around here. Well, hey, Barbara, I don't want to take your story away. Uh, I'll tell Dave I'm not going to do it, okay? Well, why would you do that? I'm not the enemy, Barbara. I'm really not. Well, just do us both a favor. Write it fair. Sorry I'm late, honey. Owen's got me at the office again. Oh, 
That man doesn't know when to go home. Where are you, honey? In the bathroom. I'll be right out. Come on, don't keep me in suspense. What happened to the magazine today? Dave Fleming gave me a really great assignment. Oh, great. What do you say when you took off your disguise? Boy, I wish I could have seen the look on his face when... Hi. What did you do? What did you do to your beautiful hair? Mark, I had to cut it. The wig just wasn't fitting right. And if I'm going to have to wear it every day, I... Hold it. Hold it. Back up. I realized something today. Getting the job wasn't enough. I have to prove I can do it. Wait, wait, wait. You told me you were going to tell Fleming. I saw how he treated the other woman on the staff, and... You, you made me a promise. And I'm still promising. This is a fabulous assignment. I wish it could have been handed to Carly Perkins, but it wasn't. I need to play it through. Did you look at yourself? Well, I'll go to the hairdresser and have it fixed up as soon as I get back from Portland. Portland? What do you mean, Portland? Well, that's where I have to do the interview. How long are you going to be gone? A couple of days. We have a client dinner on Monday. I'll be back in time. Is this going to happen a lot? I don't know. You travel on business. Yeah, but I'd rather stay home with you. Oh, I'd rather stay home with you, too. That'll never change. I promise. They let you fly the planes. I should have never packed at the last minute. I knew I got something. You remembered all my best shirts. Why don't you get your own clothes? What's in here? Your barbells? Oh, let me carry that. right after they serve food. Well, why didn't she let the stewardess give me an air sickness pill? Oh, she <laughs> was a sensational looking dame, though, wasn't she? Mm. The stewardess, what the... Uh, oh, sure wouldn't chase her out of bed. Oh. So, Carl, what's your story? You married or what? I, um, uh, living with somebody. Okay. That's sensible. Get to know each other before you lock it up. Take a peek at all the luggage. What's she like, your girlfriend? Uh, she's tall, very tall, brown hair, blue eyes, great body. Are you young guys? I bet you carry a picture of her. Picture? No. Uh, not with me. Well, I myself am the old-fashioned type. Am I a lucky guy or what? Mm. She's very attractive. What does she do? What do you mean? Oh, no, that's my wife. <laughs> she work? 
Yeah. No need for it. I mean, I make a good living, and uh, she's always talking about getting a job, but I don't think she has any real interest in it. No, no, no. I'm talking about these little suckers right there. <laughs> They're playing little league ball, both of them. Football, both of them. This here. I'm looking tough as nails, both of them. Well, I mean, you know, for girls. <laughs> I'll see your pegs get to the hotel. I couldn't beg for or steal press coverage for this team. Mm. Well, a few months ago, there was uh, nothing to cover. Souche, and I take it as a personal compliment. That is Rod Warren. He's as fast as O.J. Simpson, only he's 15 pounds heavier, and I think he's going to be the new dominant player in the league. <laughs> Stu Willis, he can run over people like a truck. But he has the grace of the gazelle. Got a great looking backfield, Pam. Yeah, I think so. But we have a ways to go. So why don't you stay here and talk to some of the guys, and I'll meet you upstairs in the box at kickoff, okay? All right. All right, you guys, tear them up now. <laughs> Yes. Carl Park from Sports Life magazine. You gonna use that uh, 33 dive again? Oh yes, this has been our bread and Well, thanks. Four, Tucson, 20. Hell, a 14-point lead at halftime over the league's toughest team. This keeps up, I'd say, you put together a winning combination. We did have two interceptions. Now, that could cost us the Super Bowl. You're headed to the top, aren't you? Is there any other place to be? What do you think of that? Hello? Okay, I'll be right down. I have to go and watch the rest of the game from the field. You're welcome to join us, but it's not the most private place for an interview. So I suggest that we continue this later at my place. I can send a car to your hotel. Is uh, 8 o'clock all right? It'll be fine. Good. Pam Dugan. She is some lady. Then I got to get some interviews in the locker room. Yes, the locker room, as in tight ends and no passes. All this has had a very interesting effect on my female libido, so watch out when I get home. Oh, I won't forget about dinner, 7.30. Somebody's here, I gotta go. Love you. Bye-bye. Who is it? Carl, stay. Hold on a second. Come on in, Dave. Door's open. You got some beer. You want one? Yeah. You got everything else you need? Oh, sure. Ooh. Very nice. Where does it say new kid gets bigger room than boss? That's not your deal. You want to know what I've been doing all day long? Good, because I'm going to tell you anyway. I've been sitting in a closed room, staring across a huge table at ad reps. Yeah. It's a dirty job, but somebody has to do it. My boy, what in the world have you done with your hair? Why? Well, it looks like you stuck your finger in an open socket. You have to have more gentleness with your rug, my boy. It's the only one you're going to get. 
I'm already starting to lose mine. It's so depressing. Little wisps of it down the drain. <laughs> so, how was your day? Great. Got some good stuff. Talk to the trainers, players, coach, all background on Pam Dugan. Oh, Pam Dugan, that is one fine, fine-looking woman. She's divorced now, did you know that? I heard. I don't know about you, but I'm starving to death. Suppose we round up a couple of steaks and check out the local talent. Oh, that sounds great, Dave, but I can't. Oh, wait a minute, kid. Uh, I know you have a girlfriend, I have a wife. There's something about me you ought to know. I love to look, but it's no touchy-touchy. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Truth. So what do you say? Well, what I mean is I already got plans. I'm having dinner with Pam Dugan at her place. You're a kid. You're way ahead of me, kid. Um, you're sure that she doesn't have ulterior motives? She's got quite a rep in that department. Come on, Dave. I figure it's a better story. Get somebody in your own environment, snoop around, look at the books on her coffee table. She's got her taste in art. That's the kind of details that give a profile texture. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and use it. <laughs> Go ahead. Use it for all it's worth. Just uh, don't forget to get the interview. <laughs> So tell me about your uh, first owner's meeting. You were surrounded by 300-pound football players. They must have treated you like a visitor from outer space. Yes. At first, they directed all their questions to my assistant. If they were forced to talk to me, they couldn't even make eye contact. But eventually, I got them to take me seriously. How'd you do that? I earned their respect, just as anyone else would have to do. Why do you think so many women fear success? Do they? Well, isn't it common knowledge that many women are afraid of losing their femininity? Many women are afraid of losing their men. Is that what happened to you? Did you lose yours? My femininity or my men? Either. Why do you ask that question? I was just wondering how your ex-husband would have handled it. And how would you have handled it? I'm sure I would have been one of your biggest fans. <laughs> really? Well, I consider myself a very liberated man, believe me. Oh. How liberated? I, um... been noticing your clothes. You wear suits a lot. Is that deliberate? One must take on the coloration of the species that one invades. I think these clothes are quite feminine. You think I should wear a three-piece suit? Tell me something honestly. Would you treat me differently were I decked out in bangles and beads? I don't think so. You are who you are. True. Well, since you're such a fascinating man, I think we should continue this in more comfortable surroundings. I'll have some brandy sent into the living room, and I'll join you there in a few minutes. Fine. That's a good word. A good interview is always revealing. Please, sit down. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah, you were asking me a lot of questions about what it feels like to be a woman in a man's world. Yes, um... Tell me, Mrs. Dugan. Pam. Uh, Pam. 
Why would a woman want to buy a football team? You mean, why didn't I spend all my money on furs and jewels and vacations in the south of France? Uh, no, not exactly. That is what you meant, isn't it? Well, the reason is that I love football and I love business. Is that so hard to accept? Not at all. I think women can do anything men can. Oh, bravo! But if you really feel that way, why have you spent the whole interview dwelling on the fact that I am a woman? You're not nearly as interested in how I run my football team. This dress doesn't bother you, does it? I mean, that is what you expected. The wealthy divorcee who invites the handsome young journalist over to her pied a terre to seduce him. Uh, no, don't misunderstand me. I. It's just that you're a woman, Carl. I don't think you're nearly as liberated as you think you are. Because if you were, you would realize that there are no male and female owners. There are just winning football teams. Gender isn't important. I got off on the wrong foot. I, I sat alone. I'm, I'm such a jerk. Don't be so hard on yourself. As a journalist, I think you show a lot of promise. As a man, well, you've got a lot to learn, but don't we all? So, let's stop talking about sex. Let's talk football. number in Portland. Why didn't you call me? How many stitches? Stitches, dear? How many does she need? Helen, 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 Helen. How did it happen? How did you let it happen? All right. All right. I'll see you later. Hey, Hearn, is she all right? I guess. God, I hate to travel. Something always happens. You know, kids that age are hard to keep track of. I'm sure your wife feels as bad as you do. Yeah, I guess I'm a little rough on her. Well, I'll make it up to her. Can I get her some flowers or something? Can I drop you home? No, I'll grab a cab to the office. I want to knock off the story while it's still fresh in my mind. Way to go. Good man. I'll see you tomorrow morning. gets paid overtime around here. What are you doing here, Barbara? Same thing you are. I came to get some repros to the printer by morning. Went well in Portland. Oh, yeah, well, spare me the details. Look, I know how you feel. This should have been your byline, and it should have been your story. Yeah. So why wasn't it? Well, that's something you've got to figure out. But don't put me in the middle when your problem is with Dave. Don't sit there and preach to me. You don't know what it's like. So what are you going to do? Hide under a barrel? It isn't worth it, Barbara. You're too good a writer. How do you know what kind of writer I am? I pulled some back issues and read your work. The women's marathon piece? It was great. That's why I'd like you to read this. I could use your feedback. I guess I could find the time. Oh, well, well would you like to share some egg foo young? Uh, no thanks. I got a dinner date. Darn. Oh, man, I'm late. Okay, mister. Trained in New York. Suspense? 
fast enough for you? Sorry, I can't imagine where she'd be. I Excuse hope... me, Mr. Rogers? Yes. Someone is uh, asking for you. Will you excuse me for just a moment, please? Oh, no! Mark, Mark, I couldn't help. The plane was late. I was at the office working on my piece. I don't know where the time was. How could you do this to me? How? I'll go to the ladies' room. I'll make myself... Look at you. you. I'll fix it's it. You... I'll it's fix too it. late. It's way too late. Do you get pleasure from this, Carly? Do you get pleasure from humiliating me? Ten minutes in the ladies' room. Ten minutes and I'll be fine. I have been very patient with you these past few weeks. Mark, what about the times when you've been late? What about all the dinners I've kept warm for you? At least I didn't show up in a dress. Mark, it's not the end of the world. There's no reason why you can't go back in there and enjoy your dinner it, without me. It doesn't look right, Carly. The man's wife is in there sitting with it. So what? She's probably bored out of her mind. And what is that supposed to mean? It means that she knows her place at these client functions. We both do. We dress up real pretty and, and smile sweetly and sit back while you men play stocks and bonds. How long have you been saving up that little speech? I don't know. Well, let me get something off my chest then. What do you think it's like to come home to a woman with five o'clock shadow? What do you think it's like to fall asleep every night with the smell of rubber cement and glue? What do you think it's like to go to bed alone because your fiancé is off in Portland? Well, then that's what it's all about. And it's not about my being late. Forget it. Just forget it, Carly. You win, Carl. You're the best man. here. Could I, could I stay at your place? Sure. But will you respect me in the morning? Not funny. I've had a very bad night. Oh, well, I'd never know it to look at you. What did you do, stick your head in a garbage disposal? No. No. I had a fight with Mark. Well, I'd hate to see him. Here, come on, sit down. It was awful. I never saw him so angry before. And I said terrible things to him. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't happen to have anything to do with this little masquerade of yours, would it? I don't need you to come down on me, too. What is that smell? It's glue. <sighs> oh, my skin is a mess. <sighs> Is it worth it, Carly? Yes. No. I don't know. Mm -hmm. When I dress like a man, he will treat me differently. And I feel different. And I feel stronger. I do things that Carly never would do, like this trip to Portland. Mm -hmm. I like the things men get. I like the respect can't keep this up forever. I know. I'm... I'm afraid to stop. Carly, am I your best friend? Of course you are. Okay, then I'm gonna tell you something. Mark is a great guy. He loves you a lot. Maybe you forgot about that. Maybe you also forgot there aren't a lot of guys who'd put up with this for a day, much less a couple of weeks. It's not about that. He just doesn't understand. I'm learning. I'm learning what it's like to be on the other side. I bet you don't know what it's like to be a guy who's losing his best girl. Come on. 
can I take you home? Your turkey tetrazina, and he looks at me green. And we hit another air pocket, and it is the end of our fearless leader. Oh, oh, where? oh it's too wonderful. He would kill you if he knew you were telling me this story. No, oh, he's a good guy. He just doesn't want anybody to know. Oh, this is stuff. So tell me, Barb. Yeah. What'd you think of the Pam Dugan story? Truth? Yeah. True. I thought it was sensational. I mean, you know, a part of me was really hoping it would be awful, but it wasn't. I mean, it was well-researched and sensitive. I'll give you the biggest compliment I can. I couldn't have done a better job. All right. Give me five. Oh, here. <laughs> If you weren't carrying a ton of clothes, if you're trying to make the look boss look good, or you're off to the Arctic, which is it? I'm trying to drop a few pounds. What would you think of the Dugan story? It needs work. Is that all? You want a cigar for every line? You're right. Get out of the magazine business. It needs work. What story doesn't? Uh, there's uh, extra soap there and uh, spare towels in the shower room. No. I got to change your clothes in the car. I'll, uh... Shower at home. Besides, I gotta make a few phone calls. You gonna go with that Pan American game story? Uh, I don't know. Could give it to Barbara. Mm, tell me how to run a magazine now. Hey, no offense. Uh, it's just a suggestion. I'll think about it. Dave, uh, maybe this is none of my business, but something wrong. Uh, yeah, what about what? You want to talk? I'm a pretty good listener. Yeah, sure. Carl? <clears throat> Question. Your girlfriend, she ever just, uh, disappear on you? Walk out? Mm. How long has it been? Uh, a week. Well, six and a half days, give or take 20 minutes. I don't know, it's so bizarre. I, <laughs> she, I figured by now she'd have it out of her system, you know. And she'd be back, but she hadn't even called. So, uh, the funny part is, of course, I, I, I don't... I don't even know why she's gone. So I don't really know what to say to the... the children. They just keep staring at me. And, anyway, I don't know what to say to them. I'm sorry, pal. Ah, boy. I sure don't tell you about this one. They just spring you up, shove you out, and uh, say, go do it. Go hit the wall, work hard, keep your nose clean. And everything will turn out all right. Uh, I put my tail on the line for this woman every day. I bust my hump to give her the best put the babies in the best schools and I don't know I don't know what it is that she wants maybe more of you 
I love her. What is that, chopped liver? It's hard to know what to do anymore. Somebody lost the book. There used to be rules. Yeah. Men have a certain way of thinking. They... They have to win all the time. They have to take on the world. From the time we're born, they teach us to never show our feelings because it's a sign of weakness. It's tough. Tough way to live. Sounds like your wife just wants you to open up and let her inside. during the night. I want to write something for me. But I don't know what form it'll take. Just know I have to do it. Carl Parsons has been getting all the credit lately. Now it's my turn. through just one eye. I had entered a world filled with standoffs and dares, challenges of turf and territory. I was part of a gender that can hit and punch, but is embarrassed to shed a tear. For the first time, my inbred calorie counter was off. I was a man. I could eat. Imagine a life where food and guilt did not go hand in hand. Imagine inhabiting a body without eternally judging its shortcomings or working it into some unattainable perfection. I relaxed. I felt terrific. How strange it was to be a man afraid of men. I waited for the night I would see a woman react to my male form with fear. When it finally happened, it was an experience that hit on many levels. I was a man, for better or for worse. What an incredible voyage. Can you give me a call when he's done? Sure. Thanks. Hey, kid, you've been in here for days. you got to come up for air sometime. Carl, a miracle happened. Dave gave me the Pan American Games story. I heard. You had something to do with that, didn't you? Listen, Barbara, you got the job. Now all that's left is you got to do the job. Yeah, but he didn't give me much time. I mean, the copy deadline is tomorrow. Well then, Barbara, it's a test. The future careers of all women at Sports Life rest on your shoulders. Nothing to it. Yeah, well, I was never really good at tests. 
little boy. I could really use some input. Do you think you'd have the time? Here, what do you think? If I rewrite the first five paragraphs, we can expand the quotes and put them in separate sidebars there. Oh, that works perfectly. There just is not enough time. Yes, there is, Barbara. Except you're gonna have to finish this by yourself. I got a dinner date. Yeah, I'm, I'm still at the office. Listen, something came up, and uh, it's kind of an emergency, and I'm going to have to work late. Uh, what do you say we move the reservation from me to Hey, babe. She hung up on you? Yeah. our anniversary yes i saw what you did dinner and table was beautiful i'm sorry i feel off it's incredible when you think about it you never home anymore we never talk the only time we make love is when it's convenient for you and now you're forgetting anniversaries boy you went right for the stereotype didn't you do me and my sex a favor will you if you're gonna be a man at least be a decent one. place around the corner? Sure. No anchovies, okay? Bye. Carl! Door's open, Barbara. Come on in. Hi. Hi. I hope you're in the mood for some company. Oh, yeah. It's been, uh, pretty lonely around here. I know the feeling. What are those? Oh, um, just pictures of my ex. No use in keeping them around anymore. That's a very healthy attitude. You know, when I broke up with Robert last year, I did not feel released until I burned every last bit of evidence. What's that? Oh, uh, just something I was writing for myself. Well, you'll have to let me see it when it's finished. We have a, a writer's bond now. Let me get some wine. Uh. 
Oh, look at that. Festive, isn't it? We have something to celebrate. We do? Oh, yeah. Dave read the Pan American piece today. And? And he said, oh, well, it needs work. But what article doesn't? He loved it. I know. That's great. Oh, Carl. <laughs> oh, Carl. I just want you to know how much this relationship means to me. Oh, my God. Mark. Mark? The sheets on our bed aren't even cold yet, and look at you. In the closet, out of the closet? You don't need me, you need more closet space. Mark, wait. It's not what you think. I can explain. Carl, you're gay? say the grass is always greener, but I've seen both sides of the fence. I am honored that a man helped Carly Perkins finally to walk in her own shoes. I am amazed that the man was me. Carly Perkins. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The Village Boys? Hold on a second. Go ahead. What? When? Thank you very much for calling. Bye. Home, oh, boys! <laughs> two places Mark Rogers would be on a Saturday afternoon. Home in bed with me or at your office. <sighs> Looks like I got stuck with second best. I came with some sad news. Someone died today. Who? Carl. I buried him in a shoebox in the backyard. You mean it? No more wig, no more beard? I don't need him anymore. Mark, something wonderful happened. Something I did all by myself. I'm being published. A cover story in the Village Voice. Oh, honey, that's fantastic. <laughs> it doesn't mean nearly as much if I can't share it with you. Oh, Carly. Do you think we can? Start up where we left off? Yes.
When can you move back in? How's tomorrow? Tomorrow's fine. I gotta go to New York. What? Well, I have to, Mark. I, it's just for a week. The voice needs me to edit the copy. I gotta take oh, pictures. Oh, no, do... fine. Hey. I guess I know where I stand. You really are something, you know that? Well, I'm beginning to understand it all. It was never Carl, was it? It was me. You didn't like what was happening to me. And all this time, you let me think that you were on my side. You told me I should believe in myself. And you told me to get out there and go get them. Carly, I... Sure, sure, it's easy when I have a little nine-to-five job. What do you think my writing is? A hobby? Sure, Carly. Go ahead. Be a writer. Just make sure that every night you're home by six and free on the weekends. Let me tell you something, Mark. My work is just as important as yours. And I thought you understood that. But I guess I was wrong. the time uh yeah it's 12 45 thank you hi hi i'm meeting carl parsons for lunch is he here yet parsons uh, not yet but the table's ready follow me please excuse me again are you waiting for somebody? Uh, yes, I am. Me too. Would you mind if I shared your table for a few minutes? Sure, why not? I hate waiting at the bar. You know what it's like when you're a woman alone. Are you meeting your boyfriend? No, just a friend from work. Oh, what kind of work do you do? I'm a writer at Sports Life magazine. Oh, Sports Life, huh? So how do you handle Dave Fleming? You know Dave Fleming? Do I know Dave Fleming? He interviewed me for a job once. But he has this thing about women sports writers. I wanted that job so badly. Did you ever want something so much you would do nearly anything to get it? Well, I did something really crazy. Probably the craziest thing I've ever done in my life. I disguised myself as a man, and it worked. What? Listen closely, Barbara. How do you know my name? It's me, Carl. It isn't. You drink your coffee light, no sugar, you pick all the dark meat out of your chicken salad, and you didn't want to come here because you thought I was gay. Ta-da! <laughs> I know, I know. I know. I had to tell you, Barbara. Carl was having an identity crisis. It was a woman in him dying to get out. <laughs> I had such a crush on you. I you know, I tried to be gentle. Oh, what's your name again? Carly. Oh, Carly. Carly, Carly Perkins. Perkins. You know, I should send you my therapy bill for the next six months. <laughs> I mean, I should be really P.O.'d at you. <laughs> what? Carl? Carly. Carly, you were a good friend. I still am a good friend. Don't let that change, okay? Never. Friends. <laughs> Bye.
Barbara, I could use your help. Oh, honey, you name it. Name it. I hope he's still here. Yeah, who's there? Oh, ah. Somebody out there? <laughs> I'm looking for Carl Parsons' office. Carl's not here tonight. I know. He told me he would be fired, and I came to help him clean out his desk. Fired? What are you talking about? Carl's doing a great job. Did you say great job? Do we, um, know each other someplace? Yes, you interviewed me for a job a while back. Here? Mm-hmm. The one you gave to Carl. Well, what do you want, miss? I'll tell you, if you promise not to kill me. Uh, why would I want to kill you? I don't even know you. Brace yourself, Dave. This is really going to knock you over. What the hell is going on here? Hey, Dave. What do you think the Dodgers' chances are of winning the pennant? Carl? Carl? Now, when I interviewed for this job, and you turned me down. I thought it was because I was a female. I was sure of it. So I came back. Huh, of all the dirty, low, two-faced, insane tricks I've ever heard of. I did a great job, Dave. You said so yourself. I have a witness, and you can't deny that. You stood right in front of me in the locker room when I took all my clothes off. Oh, you have a pretty good bond, Dave. You almost beat me at racquetball. Yeah, I would have, too, if I wasn't wearing all those sweat clothes. I call for a rematch. And who are you supposed to be, her cousin Ralph from Detroit? I don't believe any of this stuff. Dave, my real name is Carly Perkins. I think under the circumstances, I should go back to my office, Carl's office, pack up my things, but listen, it was nice working with you while we did. I... Carl? Carly. Carly, whatever it is. You do deserve to get the sack for this. I know. But you're a damn good writer. And I'd be nuts to let you go. You tell your brother for me that he's fired and you're hired. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. You can call me Carl if you want to. Okay. This is very confusing. <laughs> By the way, how's your wife? Huh? Oh, no, yeah, she's fine. Uh, she got a job. A job, really? Yes, uh, we have a... Uh, Late date tonight. Date? Oh, yeah. She's, um, taking me to dinner. Yeah, champagne, supper, the whole thing. I guess I could give you some. Carl. <laughs> Carly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, get ready. Here she comes. That was great. Okay, hurry up. Come on. She's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. Which nobody can deny. Which nobody can deny. Which nobody can deny. For she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. Which nobody can deny.
to my favorite writer. Way to go, love, Mark. You gonna drink that all by yourself? Hi. I was just uh, passing through the neighborhood. I thought I'd stop up and say hello. Hello? So, this is where you work. This is it? Pretty nice. Mind if I sit down? Sure. Yeah. You? Probably working on something. Go on ahead, I'll just sit here. How's it going? Oh, I'm just working on this rough draft and... Carly. How's it going? Very lonely. How's it going for you? Horrible. Terrible. The worst. You know, I'm the only person I know that doesn't have one of those t-shirts. Is that a way to treat your biggest fan? I love to see you smile. You know, I came all the way over here hoping to see you smile. Mark, I don't know what to do. I can't go back to the way we were. My needs have changed. I'm a different person. You probably haven't noticed it, but I'm a different person, too. I spent a lot of time thinking, Carly, and I... I was very unfair to you. There were times I was very thoughtless. Yeah, you were. You want a shirt, or don't you? Oh. I'd rather have you. It's a lifetime, isn't it? What? A lifetime of you should only act one way and I should only act another. Think we can change all that? I think it's worth a try. Could you hold, please? Something's just happened. 